So welcome everyone to the uh, summer release video of Smart ID, and uh, this time as well, on uh, we focus on um, uh, workforce solutions. Um, and thank you very much for joining. Yeah, we would also like to thank everyone for the positive feedback that we got from the first video. Um, we try to improve uh, every time and apply continuous uh, a continuous improvement approach around this. Uh, one of the changes that we are doing on this video is to try to keep keep it uh, a bit shorter. Um, yeah, absolutely. We'll try to do that. Uh, and um, yeah, let's continue right away and moving to um, having a look at the agenda for today. So start with a short uh, overall introduction, uh, then uh, looking at uh, the ease of use of digital and virtual smart cards. Uh, some of the driving use cases, um, then specifically looking at, at mobility and digital smart cards, our uh, new app uh, that is being released, uh, new possibilities around branding, uh, and um, uh, as well mobile secure email solutions. Um, we will also show you, show you a little bit on the uh, uh, usability enhancement generally, uh, and uh, specifically talk uh, a little bit about the uh, hybrid printing solutions that we uh, already released. And uh, finally, we will we'll, uh, show you some of the important parts on our documentation site that we think that you should have a look at. So let's uh, move ahead. So just as, a, as a, uh, an introduction, uh, there is for sure, as we talked about the last video, a strong trend in the market in going digital. But even if uh, a lot of our customers are moving to the mobile and to virtual smart cards, uh, the cards are still there, but it's a clear digital um, uh, movement. Um, and here it's about usability, user interface, uh, and really enabling a modern workforce uh, to, to be able to go all the way in digitizing their solutions. So. Um, and, and also giving the possibility to do everything with this that you're able to do with uh, a standard smart card. Um, also here we will show you a little bit on, on this, um, uh, for example, the uh, out of band uh, uh, push uh, approach that we're using uh, when you're utilizing the digital smart card in the mobile. And uh, specifically, uh, the feedback that we got from you when it comes to the mobile client and the need uh, for you when it comes to uh, branding possibilities uh, to have your own brand um, uh, being pushed in the um, uh, app. That's really important. Yeah. And as well, uh, uh, also when it comes to use case, being able to use the mobile to log on locally on your Windows laptop. Yeah, so like Daniel said, <clears throat> one of the um, primary focuses right now is moving towards uh, one amazing user experience for all the personal clients. Uh, that means the personal app on the mobile device and also the personal clients installed on, on uh, um, computers. Um, the personal desktop app that we released a few months ago um, <clears throat> are more and more becoming middleware-like uh, and we now introduce uh, PKI card encoding, um, replacing the previous Java client uh, PKI encoding. Um, that, that's forward. something that you, that you've been looking for for a long time. So yeah, and and, and personal desktop app was was uh, first released uh, for Windows 10, and now we're now moving into other operating systems as well as uh, like Mac OS and and Linux. Um, we are also looking for integrations to more uh, high security storage like. Um, uh, YubiKeys and, and micro, uh, Microsoft Key Store. Um, and uh, as Daniel also mentioned, uh, a lot of the focus is on self-service so uh, and an amazing uh, end user experience. And that means that you want to do as much as possible by yourself, uh, deriving credentials going from the smart card to a, uh, a digital smart card on mobile or on the laptop. Um, uploading your own photo and do cropping in the self-service portal. So um, make it um, um, easier for the support to handle those kind of things. 
so let's move into the next session. Uh, I would like to go in and have a little bit closer look at the mobile client and how we have implemented uh, the design and the possibility for dynamic branding of the uh, digital smart cards. Okay, so having a little bit closer look at the personal mobile app, we are going from the very Nexus-like app to a more neutral um, app uh, where Nexus logo is uh, not appearing at all. This uh, has a wallet approach. Uh, you click uh, the app and the app uh, very visually uh, represents the um, digital uh, smart cards that are uh, present in the app. Uh, you can very easily click uh, one smart card and that presents uh, initial information with regards to the profile. These digital smart cards, they are um, structured in a way as um, uh, normal smart cards. So they, you can have multiple certificates connected to one uh, smart card and then you have one pin code. Uh, you can disable or enable Touch ID connected to one um, card, you can change your pin code, you can as well change card layout. Here you can see some stan standard uh, featured card layouts uh, and if you continue here you can also see that you can delete your uh, digital smart card on your mobile. Um, this function can also um, enable um, server-based uh, dynamic um, branding so when we issue um, a digital smart card uh, to your mobile, we can um, control which um, design it has. Uh, so from the server, we can send um, the full uh, smart card layout with background, logo, uh, etc. Uh, and uh, in the upcoming versions, you can also see uh, a visual representation of the, um, uh, the smart card. Uh, if you go into a specific uh, uh, smart card, you can as well see more details. And in this case, you can see that this card actually contains uh, four different certificates. And if you click one specific certificate, you can also see all the different um, uh, details uh, about the certificate. So uh, this is a quick run through on how the new app uh, looks like and how it uh, is it's constructed. Okay, so that was a little bit uh, about the dynamic branding in the personal mobile app. So I would like to go over and have a little bit specific look then and how do we issue the digital smart cards to the mobile uh, and how um, uh, can we extend the usage actually specifically to uh, ensuring uh, secure email uh, yep. on the same client. Okay, so personal mobile issuance is made available from the Prime Self Service portal. Uh, I now authenticated with my smart card towards uh, the web portal and I have the possibilities to select mobile ID or get mobile ID. I can see some details about my profile and the next thing that happens is that I can see a QR code on the screen. Um, actually, what happens before this is a company policy is set um, of what types of certificates I will get in the profile. Uh, now my profile consists of one authentication, one signature, and one encryption certificate. You can also do recovery of old encryption certificates uh, from a standard policy or uh, made, uh, make the user uh, actually select which certificates they will get. Uh, so I take my mobile device and I scan the QR code. Uh, I can see the details of the request and I press accept. I select my PIN code and confirm it. Uh, the next thing I will do is to either enable biometrics or not. Uh, we um, have support for biometrics on both Android and iOS devices. And of course I want to do that. So I press yes, I use Face ID. Um, the next thing that happens is the process actually moves on. So I immediately after the profile is issued, I get uh, a request to install SMIME certificates. Uh, as you can see here, um, yeah. and I choose to install them. And right now the, the certificates are actually installed um, on the device key store yeah. and made available for, for email clients on the device. 
that's that's great, and I, I would like to emphasize there as well because the distribution of these encryption certificates it's really a critical yeah. uh, part of the processes, and and where a lot of our customers and others are are struggling. You know, how do you distribute securely because you want to have key recovery, uh, but you need to distribute um, the private key. So in this case, we're actually using the authentication. Uh, certificates on the mobile device where, where we have created yeah. uh, the public key so that we can create an encrypted tunnel and actually distribute the yeah, uh, right. S-MIME certificates in a secure way down to the mobile phone. Yeah, that's why the process looks like that. So the first uh, uh, certificates that are provisioned are the authentication and signature certificates. And then we are using them for communication. Perfect. So now you're all good to go. Uh, yeah. Non-repudiation, authentication and uh, uh, three uh, S-MIME uh, certificate connected to the same uh, digital smart card on your mobile. Good. Yeah. So let's continue. Okay, so uh, we talked a lot about the uh, mobile client and the digital smart cards here, so I thought that we move over to the desktop uh, app and, and the virtual smart cards and, and uh, other features on, the, um, on that side. Yeah, so the first version of uh, personal desktop app was all about virtual smart cards and PPM. Um, the new version takes the first step outside of the virtual smart card domain as part of our strategy to incorporate middleware functionality um, and ultimately uh, replace the classical personal desktop client. Uh, and to mention some new features, uh, we now support IDO6 PIV cards uh, for web authentication and signing uh, through hybrid access gateway. Uh, we can also store keys in Microsoft Key Store, and we also support uh, the YubiKey 5 tokens uh, to store certificates on those. Um, the personal desktop app also supports PKI card encoding through Prime, and the old way of doing it was, was dependent on Java on the client side, uh, so that is now phased out. Uh, and if we look ahead of personal desktop app, uh, we want to add more and more middleware um, functionalities such as uh, supporting different uh, card profiles and also release a client for Mac OS and Linux. Um, the user interface will also harmonize uh, between personal desktop app and personal mobile uh, and we will also incorporate the dynamic branding feature uh, that we release now with personal mobile in personal desktop app. Okay, good. Good, that gives us a um, good view of where we're uh, heading there. So um, I think that we uh, continue quickly to the uh, user enhancements and, and have a little bit look on the uh, um, new image cropping feature. Yeah. Yes, okay, so let's continue to the next subject, usability enhancements, just focusing on a specific, uh, specific feature in the self-service portal, uh, making it a little bit easier for end users. Yeah, so the, the new Prime self-service portal uh, released in Prime 3.10 uh, now supports um, image cropping of photos that you either upload or you take directly with the mobile camera without any dependencies on our clients and it's only web browser feature. Um, so you select upload photo and you can either drag or drop a file or click this um, checkbox to, to um, open up a browse tab. Um, the next thing that you do is you upload your photo and you have this little pen mark editor uh, which you can select to open up the cropping uh, functionality. Uh, when you're done you press confirm next and um, the photo is saved on your profile in time. Okay, perfect, easy, straightforward. Yep, good. Um, let's just continue, move to the next subject of um, uh, hybrid printing. <coughs> so I'm <coughs> there, we talked a little bit about it uh, the last time. <coughs> now we have um, finalized the, the full integration, native integration with um, uh, cards as a service so that with an installation within Smart ID, you are actually now able to either <coughs> print the uh, cards uh, locally, instantly in yep. your um, uh, in your printer where you encode the card, or <coughs> you can put them in a batch and actually transfer them for central uh, printing initiatives. 
Yeah, so it's a native integration with the API that we have in Cards as a Service. Uh, so the Prime and the service works really smooth together. Um, both ways, so card data is also reported back into Prime. Uh, so you can distribute it to other systems uh, such as Active Directory or tax systems locally. Yeah, <clears throat> okay, good. <clears throat> We're running out of time, uh, but just before we uh, uh, stop for today, I would just like to give you a, a short glimpse uh, of um, the doc site. So we would really encourage you to um, go into uh, Doc, follow our newsletters, and, and um, on Doc you can, for example, uh, click on the um, next Smart ID part, uh, and then the workforce. Here you can have a look specifically at uh, the different workforce modules, um, and as well below here you can also see that you can um, see the uh, architecture, uh, high-level architecture of the uh, full Smart ID offering. Here you can see all the different modules and you can click yourself through um, all the different pages on Docs. So that's an encouragement from our, from our side, I would say. Yeah. Okay, so that was everything for today. Um, we are um, happy that you stayed with us and uh, looking forward uh, to uh, presenting you the um, release uh, after summer. Okay, thanks. thanks. Bye.